Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Justin Beck, and I'm here today with my good friend Kelly Wazorg. Uh, Kelly's an architect at Bay Design Associates, and uh, you know, Kelly and I have done uh, jobs. We've done projects together from 50,000 square foot build outs to $5 million mm -hmm. ground up, multi -use. Small to big, all, all faces. So we, we've got a lot of history working together and I think she's a, a fantastic architect and I wanted to uh, sit down with her and talk a little bit about this building that we're in and maybe your overall uh, theories and principles on design. We're here at the YMCA, which is almost two years old now. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's good and broken in now. Yeah. Uh, but tell us a little bit maybe about this specific building or any project at all. Um, what role you play from a really high level? Yeah, so, so the architect is involved through all stages of design. So with a project like this, we started at the very beginning. They had a market study and that's it. So we came in, we did community meetings, meetings with staff, meetings with the maintenance personnel to figure out how they're going to work and how they're going to use the space to really make sure that they had the best facility possible. Um, their, their goals um, were really defined on their mission. Mm -hmm. So and we really wanted to make sure that the building reflected that mission. Um, we really also wanted to kind of advertise the building from the outside. So you know, you look at a lot of buildings and, and they look closed in so that people can't, you know, people can see out. But in this one, we wanted to flip that model. We wanted people to see in. Right. So we took the three main spaces, the wellness center, the aquatic center, the gymnasium, and really just made them just big glass boxes, beacons of light at night. You can see in, see the activity, and really see what, what the why wanted to advertise. And that's been successful. I mean, that's one of the things you definitely notice about the building. That, that's been great. Um, yeah. The WISE membership has, has gone up substantially. Um, people really want to be a part of the facility. They want to come in. They want to see what's going on. Um, it's been great, great for them, great for us. Um, it's a great project for us that they design. And, um, you know, look, look forward to doing more recreational community spaces. That's something that we really, really get into. Yeah. Well, so I'm a big proponent, you know, when people call me and they say they want to buy a piece of land, you know, I always ask them, well, what are you going to do with it? And they mm -hmm. say, well, I don't know, but it's a great piece of land. Uh, and I said, please don't do that. <laughs> you know, uh, let's talk about what you really want to do. What do you want to achieve? Well, how are you going to use this space? So mm -hmm. when should somebody get an architect involved? At the very beginning. So that, that's one of the biggest mistakes that we see people make is they bring an architect at the end, they've already involved you know, their team, they've already involved their staff, their contractor, they've, they've made a lot of decisions that, that may be um, not necessarily too late, but get, get pretty pricey to change. Mm -hmm. and so bring us in at the beginning, you know, we're, we're trained in everything from the big picture down to the small details. So we really want to make sure that, that your project meets your vision. The best thing you can do is bring an architect in and the best thing an architect for, can do for you is to involve you in the project. Yeah. And so make sure that, that you know, we understand exactly what your goals are so we can meet those. Um, everything from your design objective to your schedule to your budget. Um, and really involve you throughout the process because we want it to be a project that you're proud of and that, um, that, that we both are proud of and that you'll, you'll be able to use not just at the time being, but you're going to grow into that space um, and it's going to be valuable to you. You know, we've probably uh, looked at more projects than we've actually done, you know, because, yeah. I, because I always think that if I can get your input on it early on, I can mm -hmm. figure out if it's a go or no-go yeah. sooner than later. Sure. Uh, and especially as a person who uh, thinks I can do anything you can either find a solution for it or tell me mm -hmm. I'm crazy. Uh, and both of the both of those are actually solutions. So I always appreciate that feedback. So uh, a lot of people think that once that the permits are pulled, uh, the design documents have been created, that then you pull back and your job's done. But that's not really the case. No, we 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 want to be involved from the beginning, phase one, the concept idea, all the way to the end of construction, because we want to make sure that you as our client is satisfied with what you're getting. We want to make sure that the project's on schedule. We're the conduit between you and the contractor to make sure mm -hmm. that um, that everything's in place right, the documents are followed. Um, you know, we do something called a punch list at the end, which really goes through the details to look at every part of the building to make sure it's complete right, um, to make sure you're happy. And so we want to be there, like I said, at all stages. Um, it's for the best of the project. It's for the best for the client. Now I'm, I'm I'm interested in this, and I hear this from time to time. The um, the different ways, you know, contractually that you can that you can provide services. You know, traditionally, an architect designs a building, and then you go and you get three bids from contractors, and and it progresses that way. But that's not really the way that it is now. Things are more complex. 
and there's different ways to structure contracts with contractors and also with architects. Tell me about those really quickly and the benefits. Yeah, so, so the traditional way that design bid build is where we start a project. Typically that, that result results more around public projects mm -hmm. um, where we want to get multiple prices, make sure you're getting your best bang for your buck. Um, but there's, there's some other options, like you said. Um, we can design build it, which gives the, the, the contractor a lot more control on the project. Um, typically that's more of a fixed price that we work for and so we actually work for the contractor at that point. Mm -hmm. um, one of the ones we've been working with a lot lately is construction management where a contractor um, comes in and they're involved at the beginning as well. So this is great for the tenant or the client because they can see pricing throughout the project. As we're designing, we can get them and their subcontractors involved in different building systems and have them you know, price Price these at each stage. Get you know, see what's going on with the market mm -hmm. um, because that's changing constantly, especially right now. Um, yeah. So and, and you know, definitely for a smaller project, it gives the owner, the tenant, a lot more involvement because they're up front in all these meetings and, and really seeing how these decisions right. are made. And then if we do need to make a change, they're involved in that change. And so and, and they get they get their say in what that is, whether it's you know, mechanical system or, or a building skin or some material that you're wanting to use. Um, we also get a lot more input on schedule at that point. Um, bidding takes a while to do. You know, you're going out, you're pricing it. Uh, bids are only good for certain dates and times. The market's changing and fluctuating. Where if you've got a construction manager, they're involved from from day one, mm -hmm. um, and you're able to kind of really see this up front instead of waiting to the end when the documents are done. Right, right. Is, is that is that your preferred structure right now? You think? I think um, it's great for smaller projects. It's great kind of for that one-on-one -on -one when the tenant really wants to be involved. Um, it, it's a good standard, I think, all the way around because it really makes everyone um, feel inclusive and everyone really have, um, you know, an opinion and, and you know, and they could impact how the design goes. Um, the contractor, you know, as, as much as we study building materials. They're, they're involved right. you know, at all times with this as well. They're the ones negotiating with their subcontractors. They know, for example, if there's a big project going on in town, we might want to look at another system or another material because that's going to affect the, the price of the project. Right. Um, so it really helps to have their input because they're dealing with that every day. So. Very cool. So we talked about several things, you know, when to, when you should get involved in a project, how you, you work throughout from start to finish, turnover and even beyond, mm -hmm. uh, different ways in which you can work. Um, but I'm curious, so what's your favorite project you've ever worked on? Um, I know <laughs> we're sitting here in the YMCA, but... We're sitting here in the Y and I do love the Y. The Y was a great project because of all the involvement. We. Like I said, we had at the beginning with all the community members, we had members of the Y, members outside the Y, we had the neighborhood involved, we had the maintenance staff involved, and and they, we just listened. And so, and that, that was the first several meetings, just listening, you know, kind of creating this wish list of what they wanted, and, and I really think we were able to achieve everything on that wish, wish list. Um, there's been some other great projects, there's a few, um, there's some office projects I like, just because I had a client that just, let us let us design and that that didn't happen you know for a long time in Pensacola there's, mm -hmm. there's been a big transformation in Pensacola and so um, a lot of the you know and there was some design talent that left you know because yeah. of that but yeah. but you're seeing some major changes as people are coming back um, it's pretty surprising to see what's happened in the past few years and having some of those clients that kind of say Let, let's see what you can do is always always exciting so. well you're an integral integral part of community <laughs> here in Pensacola and I uh, appreciate your friendship and, and working with you and hopefully we can do several more projects together in the future. Looking so. forward to it.